Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Griff's Pod. I'm your host Noah Hammond alongside with Matt Velez. Nope. Today we'll be talking to Neil Hill, a junior forward from the basketball team from Chesterfield, Virginia. Neil is a five-time weekly honor roll team of the week and just broke our single season record for rebounding with 274 sure. rebounds. Man. Before we get started, Neil, just tell us a little bit about yourself if you don't mind. First of all, thank you guys for having me. My name is Neil course. Hill. I'm a junior here. I'm an accounting major and I've loved basketball since I was a little kid. It was a big staple in my house. I've had a ball in my hand since I can remember. Um, and that's pretty much my story. <laughs> um, I just want to know a little bit, like, how long you've been playing? Like, how long you've been playing organized basketball for? First organized basketball league I played in, I was probably about six years old. Couldn't young, shoot young. the ball to the hoop, yeah. but I loved it. It's just what, what I grew up doing. Never played any other sports competitively. Yeah, just just basketball. been a basketball yeah, guy basketball my whole life. Basketball your whole life, that kind of thing? Always played basketball. Basketball was on in my house. My brother was a really good basketball player his whole life. Um, just always been playing basketball. Yeah, I love that. That's what's up. And I mean, I see now, I've got to pull it up here, three, 33 minutes a game, 40 percent from the field. Like, you've been you've been a notable athlete in the, in the upcoming time as a player here at Chestnut Hill. And, you know, at, at Chestnut Hill, how has is, how is that experience for you being a junior? How has the CHC experience been for you? Uh, it's been a really good one for me. I came into a really talented team my freshman year, didn't play too much. Um, we were able to make the conference semifinals. And just as I've gotten older, have become a staple on the team, captain this year. And I've just loved my experience here. Yeah. We've had two different coaches here. The transition went really well. And I've loved my time here. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to touch base on. So I know that we talked about the women's basketball team. We had Bridie on here a couple weeks ago. They got a new coach, right? And But she was a transfer, so it was a little different for her, right? She, she had to get used to it anyways. Right. For you, a person that was here already, how is that? You said it's been easy, but how has it been? Like new offense, defense, a coach, you got to get used to the players and stuff. How has that been for you? So I came in with a great coach, J.J. Butler, who's now at Delaware. Yeah. And it was a very different style of program with him. He was the guy who recruited me, so... I loved him and I loved my two years with him. And I was worried when we got a new coach that how the transition period was going to be. But our new coach has been amazing. The transition period was great. He's built new relationships with every player individually really well. That's what you want. And we kept the same assistant coaching staff. Yeah. So I think that helped the transition a, a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And his offense has been really smooth. Our defensive coach is the same. So the defense hasn't changed too much. So it's made the transition really well. Good. Now, yeah. I, I have a quick question because I am, I am curious. You see it in on TV and everywhere, I, you mentioned it, the postseason. How, how is the postseason? I, I kind of want an athlete's perspective. How is the postseason for an athlete in game? What do you mean by that question? Like, like the feeling? So just the environment, the atmosphere, everything that goes into, because I know regular season and obviously the postseason is a little different. So what kind of what elements yeah. and how do you feel like going into the postseason? I know you said last year yeah. you guys were pretty far. Yeah. So how does it feel being in that postseason, the environment, and any emotions that you feel any different from the regular season? Postseason is just a different level of intensity and everything, such a heightened level of everything that you're playing with everything you got. So okay. us, right. we've we're we've never had yeah, right. yeah, we've never had an automatic bid. We've never quite won enough games in the regular season to know we were going to make the NCAA tournament. So it's always been win or go home for us. So everything you do, the weeks leading up to to the postseason, you just bring everything up a notch. You're just you got to play your best basketball at the right time. So now heading into March, we know. We got to win every game or else we're going home. March and Madness. It's we've got back. a team this year that so, we're, we really think we can win the CAC championship. So we're just trying to play the right basketball at the right time. That's the mentality to have, man. I That's think so, too. Yeah. You guys are playing some smooth basketball, man, especially with you under the rim rebound. Let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, you just had 19 rebounds against Dominican and Holy Family, which is a school record. By You beat it by two. Previous record was 17. Um, now, you told me before the podcast we have a little smaller guards, right, don't rebound as much. But you and your other big man have really stepped into that role this year. Yeah. How, like, what, what are we looking for? Like, we're, you're just are you just a ball? You know where it's gonna be, or you're just boxing out? You just feel like you're you can box out your defender. I feel like I've always been a good rebounder. I have my high school's all time rebound record as well. Yeah. I just, I feel like I can read the ball really well. And with this team, we noticed early in the season. At one point, we were 11th in the conference in rebounds per game. And we just needed to step up and rebound the ball better. So it's just something we talked about as a coaching staff and as players that we needed to rebound the ball better. And I kind of took the initiative to just every rebound, attack the defensive rebound, attack offensive rebounds. And now it's just become something that I do really well. It's the main thing that I bring to the team right now. Eighth in the country, by the way. Eighth in the country <laughs> yeah. right now. 
And he's also played 33 minutes a game. He's 27 for 27 on games played. He's played every game. Uh, he has every the most game. minutes in the conference right now. It's, uh, he's been a workhorse for this team for sure. We've, we've battled some injuries this year, so guys have had to step up and play a lot of minutes. We've played games with seven guys, eight guys. Yeah. So we've all just stepped up and do, done what we've had to do for the team. It's been a lot of minutes, but <laughs> this late in the season, everybody's worn down, so you just got to keep fighting. Yeah, for you and especially, you haven't, you haven't missed the, all 27 games, I think. It's consistency. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've yeah. been there for a team, and yeah. I kind of do want to go off topic with you. You said you're from Virginia, right? Yes, sir. So I wanted to ask you, how is life different from Virginia than it is for here? So yeah. I guess also in a sense to kind of go off that question, kind of what brought you to CHC, you know, living down south and then coming up here? Yeah, so it's been a very different experience for me. Um, Virginia, obviously, like you said, is down south, mm -hmm. and I don't really live in a city. I live 15 minutes from Richmond, which is okay. a, kind of a B-level city, right, but right, right. Um, nowhere near the size of Philadelphia. So that's been a very different experience for me. But I got to Philadelphia because, like we talked about, my old coach recruited me. I had a lot of different offers coming out of high school, but I came up here, kind of fell in love with the school, fell in love with the environment. You guys know going here, it's like, it's a yeah. family-like environment. Yeah, right. You know everyone everybody. Everyone. Yeah. I remember on my visit, I was walking through the hallways, and the guy who was giving me my tour, everyone knew him, and I thought that was a really cool thing, just how everyone knew him. Like, the other visits I had been on, nobody knew each other. Like, it was a cool small-town environment while being in a big city. So I think that's been my favorite thing about being in Philadelphia in the Chestnut Hill area, is that you're in a city. We can get to the city in 15 minutes, yeah. but... It's also a small town. I like that you brought that up about the recruiting process because, like, for me, like, I came here during COVID, right? So I yep. couldn't come inside the building, oh. and I didn't get that experience. Yeah. But you could just tell from talking to the coaches, the administrators, and people like that, everyone really cares here, right? It's a yeah. small school. We got about 1,200 kids. Everyone knows everyone. We're, like, 70-something percent athletes. Yeah. I mean, you come here to you come here for your sport. You come here to work, get a good education, yeah. um, and definitely that, that home-style feeling. Um, I just want to talk about, like, basketball a little bit. How what do you like playing about the sport so much? Like, what draws you to play in college, that next level? What was that push? Like, what is the best thing about it? Like, what do you like the most? So, I have to say, like, a surprising answer. My favorite thing about college basketball right now is just the guys. We've got guys. such a tight-knit group teams. of guys. That's awesome. We've, we've brought in freshmen that have just internet, internet into the team so yeah. smoothly. We've got guys who have been together for three and four years now. So the guys really stick together, especially with the coaching transition. We all yeah. decided that we were going to stay together. Yeah. Guys had opportunities to leave and go other places. But just hanging out with the guys, we all hang out. You guys know there's not too much to do on campus yeah, yeah. here. So we <laughs> hang out every day together. We eat every meal together. So I really love that part. And getting to travel with the guys is always fun. Yeah, right. You guys so, are always together. So you would yeah. say that your relationship with your teammates is pretty strong. Almost like yes. family, I would say. That, that, 100%. that sounds awesome. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, like I said uh, in a couple podcasts ago, I said that people don't really realize, right? You're with your teammates so much, yep. right? You got lift in the morning, yep. and then you got practice, you got film, you got you're going to eat together, everything. You spend six to seven hours with your team a day, Every no matter day. what. And then after, you might go hang out with them, talk more basketball and stuff like that. What? How did you like build that relationship with your just like by hanging out with them or just like just playing basketball? Yeah, so basketball brings a lot of adversity, so I think. Going to practice every day kind of brings us together because we can go at it on the court. And then the basketball team, we all live together. So it's been, you play with six hours a day, you lift, you eat, and then you live with them. So yeah. for the last three years, I've seen my teammates more than I've seen my family. So that's going to bring you really close. I've had the same roommate Luke has done for the last three years. Okay. Um, great guy. Great. So we have a great relationship. And... It's just been a smooth transition like a with all my teammates. Yeah. It's like my brother at this point. Yeah, <laughs> I know you had you had mentioned adversity, and I wanted to ask you what, like, kind of what adversity have you faced, you know, to get where you are today? I mean, the good player you are on the court, you know, what what have you gone through to get to where you are today? I've faced a lot of adversity, especially as a team this year. We started, as you guys know, one in thirteen. Yeah. We struggled as a team. We we have one out of conference win this season, but when you're able to bring it together like that and like you guys talked about how I've played 27 games. Okay. I've had a lot of shoulder injuries. I play, I play in games with a shoulder wrap right now. But when you're able to push through that adversity, big things can happen. Oh, so. for sure. Um, now, a big thing I've seen in your game is rebounding, 10.1 rebounds a game. I want to talk about your other skills. What skills would you like to improve going into the conference play into the championships and stuff like that? What is one thing that you really are trying to work on in your game right now? 
individually, I think I've been shooting the ball a lot better this, so far recently. I started the season in a little bit of a shooting slump, but since we hit about Christmas break, I've been shooting the ball a lot better. I'm shooting almost 40% from three yeah. in conference now. Um, I've been shooting the free throw a lot better, just scoring it a lot more efficiently. I started the season in a little bit of a slump, so I just want to prove that I can keep making shots, um, making plays for my teammates. I think I have about 76 assists on the year, and I just want to keep making plays, doing whatever the team needs us needs me to do yeah. to win the, yeah, win the league at this the, point. You're that workhorse, right? You're getting all the rebounds. You're doing all the dirty plays that no one else wants to do. Yeah. And people need we need someone like you for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, a, and a slump or not, you don't like get into your head. You know, you don't like yeah. get into your mental. Yeah. You just yeah. you just keep playing. Yep. You know, that's, that's kind of the name of the game. You just keep playing. You know, don't let it get to your yeah. head. Don't let it slow you down. Yeah, you know, I've just keep playing. had that conversation with my coach multiple times. He knows that I put in the work to do it, and I've been lucky enough to be able to show it recently. Been scoring the ball a lot better. Absolutely, recently. man. Yeah. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit just about in general now basketball, right? Now you're with each other all year round, right? You play all year round. In the off season, right? Is it just straight work? Do you guys get the scrimmages aspect, or you guys are just just working, right? Just getting, yeah. getting the running in, getting the lifting, all that, or do you guys you guys are practicing and playing? Or yeah, so work? our postseason, we incorporate a little bit of everything. Once our season ends, we all take two to three weeks to get our bodies healthy again and all that, and then it's a lot of workouts, like individual workouts as a player, individual workouts with your coach, but then we play pickup two to, two to three times a week still. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where you get more comfortable with your teammates. Like we all learn each other's game through through pickup. So it's a lot of getting better through playing. Yeah. I don't think you can get better as a player if you only work out or if you only play pickup. So we try to incorporate both yeah. into our off season and just do a little bit of everything to yeah. get better. I see you guys out with the shooting machines a lot too. And yeah. you guys are running up and down the court all the time. And that's that's gotta be a good part of the game because you're playing pickup and stuff like that. That's not Everyone knows pick, nice, pick up the ball is not organized basketball, right? You're doing yeah. stuff, yeah, you are trying new stuff, yeah, right? right? But right. that's how you get yeah. together, right? You're you're yeah. you passing, you might have someone you like playing two man games with, pick and yeah. roll, stuff like that. That's where you figure that out and pick up. Yeah. Now, do does that translate to a game? Like when you guys play pickup, are you guys trying to run the same rules as like you would? Or just you're just trying to have fun and get just playing hard? I think there's a little bit of both. Sometimes you're playing pickup and you're just out there having fun. Yeah. You're you're talking with the guys, you're seeing who's gonna win, everybody's playing freely. But I think there's also times where you know you need to lock in. You're running the actions that you want to run in games. And that's really where you learn your teammates. Yeah. So when new freshmen come in and you're playing pickup with them, the first couple of times, you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if they like to drive left-handed or right-handed, if they like the ball in their right pocket or the left pocket. Right. So that's where you really learn the details about your teammates. And you learn it through playing. You can't just talk about that mm -hmm. thing. You need to play with those guys and learn. 100%. And I think that does translate. There's Obviously, there's guys who are better at pickup than games. And, mm -hmm. Some things might not be as intense. You don't play as intense a defense in pickup, yeah. but it translates. If you play, if you play good basketball in pickup, you're going to play good basketball in a real game for sure. Now we got um, we got a little bit of time left. I want to talk about your, yeah your shooting percentage, right? You're 44 percent from the field now. It was a little bit iffy right in the first part of the, but now yeah. you really picked it up, right? You're yeah. getting, it's really going up there. You're shooting the ball good. What are you doing like when no one's when no one's around, right? You're just working out by yourself. What are you working on? Is it are you working on shooting and dribbling and stuff like that, or are you just on the shooting machine? So recently, I've just been on the shooting machine because, like you said, in the beginning of the season, I was getting the shots I wanted. They just weren't falling for me, and I was in a little bit of a slump. But I, when you're able to just get up enough reps to knock down shots, I knew they were going to fall eventually. It was just a matter of seeing some go through the hoop, and then I had some breakout games. I had 20 points against Jefferson, another 20 against Goldie Beacom. So luckily, once I saw the ball go in, I got I got a lot more confident. Yeah. And now just getting individual work on the gun, shooting with teammates. And later into the season, you shoot a lot more in practice because you can't be as physical because yeah, guys have played a lot of minutes, your body's day, wearing yeah, down. So I've been able to see the ball go in the hoop more and it's just helped my percentage a lot. And once you're a confident basketball player, same way with lacrosse, mm -hmm. you're shooting a shot and you just have complete faith yeah, that it's going in. 100%. And even if you miss it, you think the next one's going in. Now, yeah, speaking of that, like a lot of minutes, are you guys, are you guys using the training room? Are you guys always in the training room, ice pass, stuff like that? I see you in there. <laughs> are you are you always in there? Yeah, that? shout out to Sarah. Yeah. Great trainer. <laughs> we love Sarah. We we practically live in the training room at this point. Um, I'm getting old, yeah. body's breaking down a yeah. little bit. I understand. But I yeah, a lot of our guys spend a lot of time in the training room. We've had a lot of unfortunate injuries this season. We've had a lot of shoulder injuries, knee injuries. And just guys wearing down. So yeah, try to spend yeah. as much time in the ice bath as you can, getting yeah. therapy. Whatever you need to do to be able to get on the court 100%. and be the best version of yourself. 100%. Awesome. 
All right, uh, thank you guys for everyone tuning in. Uh, go follow Neil on Instagram. He'll be tagged in the description below. Thank you, everyone. See you guys next week. I will, guys. Thank you.